Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number 36 and I'm going to discuss rule 3 for integration by parts. I'd like to draw your attention to my website universityphysicstorias.com. So the previous videos which are relevant to this are as follows. Number 35 I discussed integration by parts rule 2. Number 33 I discussed integration by parts rule 1 or approved integration by parts. In video number 31 I discussed Stokes theorem and in video 18 I discussed product rule number 3. So where do we go from here? Well, in video number 31 I proved integration by parts and the, the, here it is here. So in English what it means is that if we are integrating the product of two functions, namely f and the derivative of another function, in this case g, we're able to transfer the derivative onto the other function, in this case f, with the cost of a minus sign and a boundary term. So we, saw, we showed that in the previous video, which is rule 2, that we had something similar happening. So the product rule we're going to use this time is rule number 3, which is, which is here. And we're also going to use Stokes' theorem, which is here. Okay? So if you saw the previous video, you know exactly what's going to happen. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to integrate over a surface product rule number 3. So we're going to get the following. We're integrating over a surface. We're going to integrate the curl of the scalar a, excuse, scalar f multiplied by the vector field a. We're integrating that dot dA, which is the infinitesimal area element. And that's equal to the surface integral of the scalar f outside of the curl of a, the vector field capital A will say, dot the infinitesimal area element. And we need to take away from that the integral over the surface again. But this time we need we have the following, we're going to have the vector field capital A cross product with the gradient of the uh, scalar field F dot the infinitesimal area element. Okay, so if you look at Stokes theorem, we can, we can apply Stokes theorem as follows. So we rewrite the whole thing applying Stokes theorem as the integral over the surface of the curl of F times A okay so that's that's if that's the curl there dot da that's going to be equal to the, the path integral so we're using we're using stokes theorem to go to a path integral or a line integral of we'll say in this it's going to be f times the vector a dot dl okay so that's stokes theorem and we we have the other terms left over so the scalar outside of the curl of a dot da and we have the surface integral again of the vector a cross with the gradient of f which is also a vector dot da. So we're at the last line, all we need to do is rearrange and we get our integration by parts. So that means that if we have a surface integral of a scalar function f outside the curl of a vector field, in this case a, and we're, we're integrating this across a an area, we can we can rewrite it as follows, and I'll explain it in a moment. Okay, bear with me now, plus the path integral, to close the path integral, and that's important, f times a dot dl. So, in general, what integration by parts says is you can transfer the derivative, you can, you can transfer the derivative, and, uh, and you, it costs you a boundary term. So in this case what we've done is we've transferred the derivative, we've transferred the Nabla operator operating on A. So now the Nabla, Nabla operator op operates on F, but it's cost us our boundary term. In this case it didn't cost us a minus sign, but it cost us a boundary term nonetheless. So this is a way of, where we, we still have our surface, uh, surface integrals, or excuse me, yeah, we still have our surface integrals, or double integrals, but we've gone to a closed line integral. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also visit universityphysicstorials.com.